Thanks for stopping in again. Tonight, we are going to strip down this radiator and grill shell. Uh, main reason is I talked to a few local radiator shops and a couple guys didn't want to touch it at all. And the one guy that I actually found that wanted to work on it said that he would rather have it sooner than later as once racing season starts he gets into a lot of race car radiators and repairs so the sooner i can get it to him possibly the sooner i can get a diagnosis on if it's good or bad kind of an overall review of the core itself or if we need to send him that one that i got from squatch so Let's get this one stripped down and see what it looks like. With all four of the rusty bolts out, you can grab this screen or guard. And even though it looked like it was in nice shape during the initial walk around, once we have it apart here, we can see, once again, the elements have taken their toll. We'll keep it around. It is workable. Next up is the oil cooler extension, and unfortunately, that has seen better days as well. So at this point, the only thing holding the cooler in is the lines that run through this main casting here, where they thread in here. And it's the exact same thing up top. Now, if you recall, when we took this assembly off from the crawler, this nut here and the nut up top in that fitting did not want to move. That's why I ended up taking it where it meets the diesel engine. I think we're going to have to <clears throat> put a little heat to these and see if we can get those apart. I'm not 100% sure if we pulled the bolts for the side cover, if that would move out of the way. It looks to me like it actually goes through there. I know some of the later add-on kits, you'd find that these were cut to run their cooler lines through. Let's see if we can get these broke loose. So while trying to loosen that line, I didn't think that that coupling nut would turn, but we actually ended up finding that there's nothing left of that line anyway. So up to the top here, I tried removing it off of this connection here. And what I actually found was when I would torque on it, it actually wanted to turn on the pipe threads here. So that will work. I'm just going to unthread it as one unit. I can worry about taking this apart later, or maybe I'll just leave it. Sometimes things are better left undisturbed. I might create more of a headache for myself if I continue trying to take that apart. Now, that... Um, not going to have much choice but to get apart or find a suitable replacement. The lines themselves, the pre-bent line, they actually look to be in really good condition. It's just where that line went through the radiator itself. 
it has deteriorated and it is gone. So I will keep taking this out here and I'll bring you back. All right, with both of those lines out here on this end, should be able to slide this oil cooler out of there. And we're putting up a fight in this lower corner here, being that the rest of that pipe is still in there. Well, with that oil cooler out of the way, we can see what's been causing all of the problems. Mice got in here, made themselves a wonderful nest, along with a lot of dirt and grease. Hopefully that doesn't affect that core. If it does, we do have another one, but it would be nice not to have to resort to replacing everything but sometimes that's the nature of the beast in these older machines okay so this is what we're supposed to be looking at this is a like a spreader bar or pinch bar basically it spreads the load out from the bolts onto the core which is that thin line there and that runs all the way across now we're looking at the top. I'm gonna to bring you down to the bottom here. And it's wet because I sprayed brake clean in here just to try and clean up that uh, dirt and debris. Also, it keeps the mouse droppings from going airborne. Sometimes that can be harmful. So, that's a bolt head. That's a bolt head. Bolt, bolt, I should say what's left of the bolts. And you can just faintly make out that bar and the core below it. Now I'm hoping that the core did not suffer any of the corrosion that has happened down here. But either way, it needs to come apart. I need these cast iron pieces even if we end up replacing this entire core. So the next step, I'm gonna work from the bottom up on this only because I'm holding it from the top with the forklift. What I'm gonna do is take a grinding wheel after all this brake clean evaporates and get rid of all these bolts. There's no way you're, you're gonna get on any of these. Maybe that one maybe but it's not worth it I'm just gonna cut them off not worry about getting the rest out later here's what I ended up with and I still need to do that one there and this one on the far left here I'm not a hundred percent sure how I'm gonna do them I might get my die grinder out I'm just limited with room with the way this casting is designed. Before I break the die grinder out, I'm going to come over here and pull the bolts for the fan shroud. That one's already out because that was connected to that oil cooler line. I have one up there. That one that's no longer attached. Along with that one that's no longer attached. But we still have to pull the one in the center. Uh, main reason I want to get this out of here is there's bolts all along the bottom here that are also buried in dirt. And I want to see if I have to grind those. Hopefully not. But we'll see once we get this cover off.
Well, this side doesn't look any better. Until we get down here, and you can actually make out some bolts again, and then we start to lose it at that one. Well, this is a pleasant surprise. I figured it was worth a shot. I was not banking on any of these backing out. But I'm not complaining either. I'll do the ones that I can get the socket on. And the other ones I'm just going to have to grind the heads off from. With all the fun grinding done, I took just a small pry bar and the three bolts I was able to get out. Just stuck that pry bar right in there. And what I'm going to try and do is walk this plate off from here. As that's just going to make getting the core out that much easier. And I want to do this before I take the bolts out of the side as well. Because once I take the bolts out of the side, this bottom could drop. I don't really want that. I just want to get these plates out of here for now. And I'm not really worried about bending them. They're pretty well corroded the way it is. So I'm going to keep working at this. Keep working back and forth, get a little farther each time, a little more of a bite, and I'll bring you back. And here's what we ended up with. We did end up bending it pretty good, but as you can see, there's not a whole lot left of it anyway. Still a small chunk of it that has kind of fused itself together with the bottom. And we'll get that off later. And as you can see, I also have probably a good three-eighths worth of bolt to grab onto to get the rest of these out so that should work out well what i'll end up doing is probably just putting just a little bit of heat on each one let that kind of sink down maybe heat it again just for extra insurance grab a hold of that they should come right out so we need to move on to the front side get that one pried out of there and then we should be able to take this bottom casting off Onto these side bolts here. What I'm going to do is back them out a few turns just until they're loose enough that I can tap on this big casting with like a dead blow hammer. See if we can just get it to start moving. So I'd hate to take the bolts all the way out and then tap on that and have it fall. Okay, guys, that worked excellent. I actually, uh, didn't even have to hit on this. I just loosened those bolts on both sides and it just dropped. Um, I was really hoping I could catch it on camera. I was thinking I was going to have to, you know, tap this down. But like I said, as soon as I loosened the bolts on the other side, this side dropped and then that side followed right after. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring everything to the ground, pull these bolts all the way out, and then I'll lift it off of this bottom casting. And that right there is why you take these apart when they've been sitting for this long. That is almost half full of just trash. On the other hand, the core doesn't look terrible. I think that actually might clean up. I was actually surprised once I got that metal strip out of there. This all seems to be in fairly decent shape as long as we didn't get into any of those tubes there. It's time to work on the sides. Same thing, just upside down. We have a bolt there, bolt there, bolt there. Same thing on the front. It is exactly the same bolt pattern, just flipped upside down. So we'll go through and actually pull all those bolts and leave just a couple and the top should stay hanging and I'll grab the core or we'll let it back down either way we'll have to get 
the core separated from the top yet. So let's get after it. Well, that is rather disappointing to see that that's how they made those coolers fit, was just bash the fins in and looks like they like these tubes were torn out and the top was soldered shut and the last thing to do before we can undo these final two bolts and complete this disassembly is pull this overflow tube off of here I will probably end up making a new one. This one's got a few kinks in it. But I like keeping these for a pattern to follow or a trace. You can lay it up to your new piece, figure out where your bends are gonna be. Make it more of a factory look. With the core and the top tank back on the ground, I pulled the bottom or the two bolts for the top tank that were on the bottom. We should be ready to lift the top tank off of here and see what the core looks like. The amount of scale that has come out of this top tank is just fascinating to me. I think we'll have to blast inside of there to get rid of all of that scale. Well, here it is, guys, broken down into individual pieces, or very close to. Oil cooler there, oil cooler extension bracket, top tank, bottom tank. We still have some disassembly to do. We need to get all those bolts out. We will pull this engine turnover drive apart. Fan shroud screen or cover there's all four of those bars for spreading the load on the core two side plates there's the core itself and down here we have the oil cooler lines and the overflow line the only thing missing from here is the hardware i have that in a bin already so it's after midnight here i think i'm going to wrap the video up clean this up get it off the floor we'll load this core up see if they can do anything with that one if not we may repeat this entire process on the radiator that i got from squatch so thanks everyone for watching following along subscribing liking the videos leaving comments i appreciate it we'll catch you on the next one